Bad luck in the project. If you've just joined us, here's what's making news. It's Friday the 9th ember. A 14-year-old is being questioned by police over a stabbing during a schoolyard fight in North Wollongong. A 16-year-old was stabbed in the stomach. He's been airlifted for surgery. Paramedics believe the blade of the knife snapped off in his abdomen. There's apparently a few kids um, witnessed it and um, yeah. hopefully my daughter wasn't one of them because okay. I don't want that to be on her conscience. Parts of Victoria have copped a real song with the town of Coleraine in the state's west dealing with its worst floods in 20 years. Up to 50 millimetres of rain's fallen there in the last 24 hours. Blade was also lashed by wild thunderstorms overnight with two women surviving lightning strikes. Jane Intini was sitting down to dinner when her mum's house was hit. The bowl of pasta, sat in front of the telly uh, and, you know, in between mouthfuls, bang. It was like the house was x-rayed. It was literally, it was that bright. It left you with stars and eyes. And this next story will make you smile. Lucky Lakeisha Patterson's not only won Australia's first gold medal at the Rio Paralympics, she's done it in world record time. She sized 0.11 off a, a, off a second off the previous S8 400 metre freestyle mark, set by American Jessica Long, who finished second. As just 10th on the medal tally with one gold, one silver and two bronze. And in the latest bizarre move from Kim Jong-un, sarcasm has been banned in North Korea. <laughs> Apparently he's worried people will only agree with him ironically. It comes as North Korea today detonated its largest ever nuclear test bomb worldwide as an act of maniacal recklessness. You know what? Banning sarcasm is genius because it'll make it so much e easier to read texts and tweets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not sure? Well, in North Korea, yeah. they know now. And also, he's just banned hipsters. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah that and is true. And teenagers. He's banned teenagers. North Korea. This oh, good brilliant. one, Kim Jong. Banned yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, them. Go on. Wow. Uh, now, 20, the 2017 Records is out today. And you'll see the usual array of big things, uh, like a big chair. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah, there's a lot of point to all oh, this. Uh, yeah, the giant okay, golf okay. tee. It's real? Uh, yeah, giant, yeah oh, it's real. Giant letterbox, sorry about that. Uh, now, I'd like you guys to have a guess at what record this guy is breaking. Okay, what do you think is going on oh, here? Oh, what is he doing? Yeah, uh, wow. What do you reckon? Any ideas? Oh, like giant a... car backfire. Weird, <laughs> weirdest commute home from Does work. He... Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, he's breaking the record for the longest amount of time anyone's been on fire for. But what? So why, why, is there, why is he being dragged? Yeah. Well, we've been trying to work that out. We can work that out. Oh. We guess it's something to do with standing still is a bad thing. We're on fire, maybe. I don't know. So, so you mean you brought us a really weird news item yeah. and you don't actually understand what... <laughs> well, I just said probably... But he still hasn't finished. I think he's still going. Oh, good. Uh, where is he? There he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You really need to get home, mate. Seriously, you look a little dazed. I love all the cows over to that side of the paddock. <laughs> Have a look. What's this doing? I feel like that whole thing was a segment about you and Photoshop. What? No, that wasn't Photoshop. That was real. That was real. That was 100% real. I'm going back to the letterbox and the stuff. Yeah, I think no, you made that, that up. Real. That was real. All right. Hey, parents. Having trouble getting your kids to go to school? Well, maybe it would help if the government fined you thousands of dollars. <laughs> Crook truancy is a serious and complex problem, which requires serious and complex solutions. Or you could just fine parents two or even five thousand bucks and, you know, see what happens. The main reason that punitive measures tend to fall down and invariably fail even across whole systems is that we're actually tre not treating the cause, we're treating the symptoms. South Australia, both sides of politics plan to crack down on chronic absentees by massively increasing fines. The Liberal opposition wants to push fines from $500 to $2,000, while the Labor government's considering as much as $5,000, and failure to pay could ultimately result in jail time. What happens often with, uh, with governments is that they try to find a simple message, and I think parents who are listening to that message will understand that it's much more nuanced. Other states also allow for financial penalties, but only South Australia wants to make it easier to prosecute parents. The Education Minister telling us... I will continue to pursue tougher laws, increasing penalties and reducing grounds for defence. Tough talk. The only problem is punishing parents work. Where schools and where systems have deployed this kind of approach, this kind of punitive approach all around the world, they invariably fail. Meanwhile, Tasmania has a plan to fully pick up students from the street and drive them to school, which Limo tells me would look like this. 
But if we can't find a modern solution, why not go back to the good old days when students who refused to go to school simply got suspended from school? I never understood that. Uh, Stephen Marshall is the South Australian opposition leader. He joins us now. Stephen, do we actually have any evidence to show that punishing parents in this way reduces truancy? Look, the vast majority of parents do the right thing. Uh, unfortunately, there are some parents who are just not doing the right thing. They're not getting their kids to school. We're not talking about being parents whose children might miss one or two days per term. And this is part of a regimen of ideas that the Liberal Party is putting forward to try and tackle this chronic problem that we have here in our state. I understand what you're proposing, but my question is whether there's any evidence that it works. I'm happy to cite evidence to the contrary. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare found that incentive-based programs are more effective than the sort of the opposite, which is what this is. Australian Council of Education Research, punitive measures don't have an impact on educational outcomes. Uh, in the United States, the National Centre for School Engagement, no concrete data to back up the idea that finding and jailing parents helps fight truancy. That's what I'm relying on. Well, I'll tell you what I'm relying on, and that is a policy that we're putting forward that starts with an audit of every school's truancy policies and procedures, which increases the resources within the Education Department to tackle truancy. There's a whole pile of things that are at the uh, disposal of those truancy officers. But if there, is no, if there is no success, if there is no success with those truancy officers, then there needs to be some consequences from, for parents who are either keeping their kids at home or obstructing investigations from truancy officers. So let's say we've got a boy in year he comes from a very violent home. Let's say one of the parents is an alcoholic. How is giving that family a $2,000 fine going to help that situation compared to putting more resources into a school counsellor or possibly a psychologist? Well, nobody's saying don't do the other things. All we're saying is No, but how is, is the are... fine going well, to what... help that family? Well, what we're saying here is that kids are falling through the cracks. We where know there that is kids no... are falling... We... The whole story and the reason we've done this on the project tonight is because we know that children are falling through the cracks. So we've moved on from that. What's going to happen to that Year 8 boy if that father is violent and he's an alcoholic, can you tell me what's going to happen to that year eight boy if that $2,000 fine comes home? I don't think that a truancy officer is going to be able to solve those problems. But if a truancy officer has identified somebody who is away from school a long uh, period of time, and that hasn't been reported to other agencies, and I think this is very valuable... But this happens without a fine, though, Stephen. Sorry? This can happen without a fine. The teacher of course can go... it can happen without a fine. We're not saying the fine is the total solution. But at the moment... Uh, truancy, chronic truancy, is being ignored here in South Australia. There are not adequate resources and there are not adequate de deterrents for parents that are doing the wrong thing. Nobody is saying this is going to solve every welfare problem, every child protection problem in South Australia. As Justice Margaret Nyland points out, Robin Layton uh, points out, uh, as various coroner's reports have pointed out, we need to do much better at chronic truancy in South Australia and that's what uh, these suggestions that we've made today will do. And I'm very pleased that the government has supported our calls. Stephen Marshall, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, guys. I think the frustration with that interview for me was that it's not the reporting of the truancy that's the problem. That when you look at these children, truancy is created from a huge range of very, very serious issues. Mm. And so we don't want the kids to get to the point of getting to a judge. We want an incredible system in our schools that makes the kids feel welcome and to come back in and sending out a fine and, and associating school with another negative sort of area uh, is not mm. going to work. I don't want to be cynical. I've got a feeling the fine thing's a headline. Right. Because like, I'm feeling they've got these other things they know are the issue yeah. and they're going to try to work on it. The fine's just a resort thing they've added on there. They may never even implement it. No. But it kind of sounds good. And sounds tough. And, yeah. Sounds like we're doing something about it. I don't know this, by the way. I'm just, that's just my... No, that sounds just a typical load of old codswallop. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? You know. Thank you for your analysis. You're welcome, mate. <laughs> I'm here all night. <laughs> well,